Hey guys, this is the problem letter exchange from today's contest. The problem starts off with there being three N letters, which are NWs, NIs, and NNs. These are distributed amongst N people, such that each person has exactly three letters, which do not have to be distinct. After this distribution, everybody wants to have exactly one W, one I, and one N. However, in this distribution of letters, some people could end up with multiple of a particular letter, and some people might not even have a particular letter at all. So, to achieve this goal, players can trade with each other. A trade is between two people, where both of them choose a letter that they currently have and give it to the other person simultaneously. So essentially, they swap a letter that they have for a letter that the other player has. The question is, what is the minimum number of trades required for each person to have exactly one W, one I, and one N. First of all, we realize that we can represent every person's set of letters as a set of trades that they need to make to get exactly one W, one I, and one N. For example, a person with three Ws, zero Is, and zero Ns can be represented by the trades WI and WN. This means that they need to trade a W for an I and a W for an N to satisfy the condition. Now, we can create a 3D array, trade I, J, where I is a letter that we need, and J is a letter that we can give. And trade I, J will contain a list of indices of the people with that trade. We let W equals zero, I equals one, and N equals two to make this nice. Now realize that to make every person have exactly one W, one I, and one N, we just need to perform each of these trades that we have. Now think about what a most efficient trade looks like. If a player A needs, for example, a W and wants to give away an I, and player B needs an I and wants to give away a W, then this trade can get rid of two trade requirements at once. So to put this nicely, for every number in trade IJ, we can pair it up with the number in trade JI to get rid of both of them in one trade. After doing all these optimal trades, we might still be left with some trades that we still need to do. Let's see what these leftover trades look like. We can write out all the trades like this, pairing up the optimal trades with each other. Assume that we perform all the optimal trades. Now, without loss of generality, assume trade 0, 1 has n numbers inside it. That means that trade 1, 0 must have no numbers inside it as if it did have some number inside it, we can still perform an optimal trade. And now, realize that since the number of zeros, so Ws, required is the same number of zeros that are distributed, if n people need a zero, that means n people also want to get rid of a zero. That means that trade 2, 0, meaning the people that need a 2 and want to remove a zero, must be n numbers inside that trade 2, 0 by the same logic. And also, by the same logic as before, trade 0, 2 has no numbers. Now we can do the same thing and we can deduce that trade 1, 2 is n and trade 2, 1 is 0. Now, since we assumed trade 0, 1 has n numbers at the start, if we rather assume trade 1, 0 has n numbers at the start, the diagram just flips, so we can just take care of that taste later. Now, how do we resolve these trades? Well, realize at this point that there are no more optimal trades. But what we can do is take a person from trade 0, 1 and make them trade a 1 for a 0 from a person in trade 2, 0. That means a person from trade 0, 1 gives a 1 for a 0, meaning they have satisfied the requirement now, and the person from 2, 0 gave a 0 for a 1, so now the new thing that they want to give away is a 1, so now they become trade 2, 1. And now we can pair this up with a trade 1, 2 member and get rid of it. And now we have used two trades for these three trade requirements and we can work out the answer. Now, why is this the most optimal? Well, realize after we do all the optimal trades, each non-optimal trade will either remove one trade requirement and create one optimal trade, or remove no trade requirements and create two optimal trades. The first, which is what we just did, removes three trade requirements per two trades. The second one, however, removes four trade requirements per three trades, which is more inefficient. 
Hence, our solution is optimal. And we are done. Thank you and stay tuned for more interesting and cool problems. Thank you.